Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final edition of this year for a closer look with Mark Shine and Mark Miller. And to start off, we just want to take a moment to express our condolences to Coach Herb Lane and his family and the Perry community for the loss. Uh, he will be missed by us here at WSN and a lot of folks out there at the Perry community. Hey, Mark Shine, this is episode number 28. Yep. And as we go uh, into our last show and talking about tournament, we got some girls that are down in Columbus, about yes, to go do. to Columbus. Yes, we do. If we can put some brackets up here. We had a chance to see some of these teams play last week. We and I saw Ottawa Glendorf play. Here's their matchup. Of course, always look at Hathaway Brown out there, even there with that 17 and 10 record. That's a, a good bracket there for the Titans. Let's move on to a couple other brackets, too. Here's Versailles. They're going to match up. You know the Versailles community? They kind of got basketball figured out, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Boys are still going. We're going to talk yeah. about them later on. Of course, Afrocentric's waiting out there as well. And then to D4, a couple teams we've seen recently in our area. Uh, Waterford's the defending state champion. Ottoville down there. They're playing Berlin Highland. They're always good. Yeah, so always congratulations, good. ladies, for making the state tournament, getting a chance to play in Columbus, and good luck. Yeah, good luck. Bring back some championships. All right, plays of the week. We plays always have some week. good ones. This week is no different. Here we go. The first one, we're going to start with Perry, and they're playing Minster here. We're going to just let it run, first of all. Watch the defense of Jacoby Lane Harvey as he sprints back and gets the steal right here. This is about as well as you can execute press offense. He gets fouled before he gets to the basket. Let's take a look at it again. Here's Jacoby Lane Harvey right here. He's got options. First, we've got a nice trap over here. Here's our steel man. Harvey goes this way to the middle of the floor, but watch how he recovers. And this is, oop, I got to get back and watch the dead out sprint. He points to his teammate. Kobe Glover does just what he's supposed to do to stop the ball right there. And then Lane Harvey with the steal. You know, you think you got a basket if you're Minster. Instead, off goes Kobe Lane Harvey. He gets fouled, goes to the free throw line, and Perry goes on to win. And then this is the game who actually put uh, Elida ahead against Ottawa Glandor. This is Balin Stinson making a great move down the low post. Spins into the lane up with the left hand with the up and under. We're going to look at Balin again as we see this. This score is tied right here. He's over here on this side of the floor, makes this move across the floor, and then watch the patience inside to catch the ball in the low box. He fakes into the lane, sees help, and spins back with the left hand. He has had a great tournament, and he will be a key factor for the Elida Bulldogs this week when they go to the regional play. All right. We always like to point out a couple of things that happened in our travels with bright spots, and we got a couple of unique ones this time yes, around. Yes, we do. And the first one is us being <laughs> assaulted in the yeah, game. That, we didn't uh, think it was too bright. Well, but. But we, that's right. Let's put it up here. Let's get it to run here if we can. This is uh, Fort Recovery and St. Henry, and watch us. Whoa. Whoa. Almost. Got a lap full there, Coach Save it to Buzzer. You saved the monitor. Uh, I lost a bottle of water. You saved yours. Paper's a little bit messed up. We're but, thankful uh, for strong tables. Don't we appreciate guys who hustle? Here it is again. Watch it in slow motion. And going for the steal. And yeah. Great hustle. We're glad the player didn't get injured. That's right. And we're safe there. And then we were up at Napoleon, and we saw a couple of things that we wanted to share with you. We love animals, kids that dress up like animals. And we spotted a cow pregame. Yes, there he is, and they did admit to us that uh, it was actually his girlfriend's uniform. Yeah, and my grandson, who's three and a half years old, said, what are you getting your picture taken with a porcupine for? <laughs> Not sure where that came from, but there's our picture with the cow, and one other one that we really caught our attention. Yeah, we saw a banner on the wall. Uh, Napoleon's a public school, uh, and they had this banner on their wall, and we really liked that. Uh, it wasn't in a, a great place of prominence up on the end wall, but in God we trust, with, all th with God all things are possible. We appreciate that. Thank you, Napoleon, for having that up on your wall. That is definitely a bright spot for us as we go around and see all these gyms. Absolutely. All right, it's time to preview the boys, and yep. I'm going to start off. Division two in Toledo this Thursday, Elida, 16-9. and nine. They will play Parma Heights' holy name at 23-2. and two. You know, in the bracket, it's Elida and three number one seeds. But they beat Ottawa Glandorf. They were 21-2 and two at the time in overtime. They beat Upper Sandusky, who was number one ranked in the state. They were 24-0 and at the time. So maybe they're the giant killers. At least they think they are right now. They finished a regular season losing four out of five. But since then, they have played extremely hard. Their seniors are playing like seniors. Drew Sarno's taking care of the ball well. And Balin Stinson, the man that you showed a little while ago, has just been playing above and beyond what he has done all season long. 
Holy Name beat Bay Village Bay. That's a, a name that's very familiar in the regional tournament. They beat them by 166-65. Or 66 65. The other two teams in the, in the bracket, Sandusky at 21 and 4, Wasion at 24 and 1, will not be an easy task, but the Bulldogs are there. Good luck to the Bulldogs. Well, we're going to swing out and look at Versailles right now. Of course, they're 25 and 1. They were ranked number 2 in the state this year. They play Cincinnati Roger Bacon, who is 21 and 4. We've been through all those things with Versailles all year long, so let's look at their opponent. They're led by Craig McGee, he's a 6 foot senior. He averages just 13 points a game, but 4.4 assists and three steals a game. James Johnson, although he's 6'6", is their three ball shooter. He averages 12 and a half points a game. Uh, Justin Johnson averages 10 points a game, shoots 57% from the field. And Alex Frim, who's 6'4", is their leading scorer at three, 13 points a game. So very well balanced scoring. What about Roger Bacon? They have outscored their opponents 71 to 34 and a half in the tournament. It's a good basketball team and a big challenge. Then the winner of that game will go on to play probably Summit Country Day. They're led by Alex Martin. He averages 16 a game. Alex Dolig, who averages 15 points a game. If you look at the website, that's at Trent Arena. And the game is Saturday night. And the time is to be announced. So <laughs> we'll have got to that figure figured out yet. Haven't got that one figured out yet. But All good right. luck to Versailles. All right, let's look at Division Four. They go to Bowling Green on Wednesday night. Marion Local, 17 and 8, will play Milan Edison, coming in at 16 and 9. Marion Local beat the number one seed in the district, Wayne Trace, by one point. Beat the number two seed in the district, Spencerville, by two points. Tough schedule prepared them for tournament. Not only do they play the max schedule, they played six WBL teams. They played the Shelby County League winner. They played the Northwest Conference champion winner or the, the winner of the conference. Tyler Mesher, of course, all Northwest Ohio leads them, but they have a lot of guys that can kind of contribute in there. The other two teams in the bracket, Archbold, 20 and five against Oregon, Cardinal Stritch from east of Toledo, 21 and four. So good luck to the Marion local Flyers. They got hot at the right time. They did, just like uh, Elida has done That's so far. Right. All right, and Perry and Fort Laramie down at Trent Arena on Tuesday evening. Um, again, the goals is to the Perry community. We've been through their players before. How about Fort Laramie? You and I saw them. Mm -hmm. If anybody can handle Perry's guards and their pressure, it's Fort Laramie. Dylan Braun, first team all district. Evan Br Burning, he is a second team all district. They were state champs in 77 88, but not since 1993. And so good luck to them. The winner will end up getting New Madison Tri Village. They're led by a pair of uh, 20 point a game scorers, Gavin Richards and Trace Couch. You look at, now they're going to play Fairfield, Cincinnati Christian Academy, and Tri-Village will be heavily favored in that game. So if you look at Tri-Village, you go, well, they're only 17-6. and six. They had four players miss four games because of an in-school suspension problem, and so those were all losses. Their record, their team is much better than their record shows. That also will be played on a Friday night. That's a finals game there. And of course, New, New Madison Tri-Village won it all in 2015, and our producer director, Ben Reif, he just goes nuts every time we mention it because that's his home community. Yeah. Good luck to them, and good luck, of course, to Perry and Fort Laramie, whoever matches up with them. All right, let's stay with Division Four tonight in Bowling Green. Delphus uh, St. John's at 19-4 will play Holgate at 21-4. DSJ beat Crestview 48-36 in the district final. They started out 3-3. Three three. Remember way back when we didn't yeah. think they were going to be very good? Then they just won 13 out of 14, so they are definitely on a roll. Tim Krieger, Northwest Ohio player, uh, first team. He just keeps getting better and better and better. Colleges are starting to take notice. The other two teams, North Baltimore at 16-10, and 10, so they got hot in the tournament as well. And Mansfield, St. Peter's, boy, that's a historical school as far as tournaments go, 23-2, and 2, so good luck to the Blue Jays. All right. Mark and I have been saving up all yep. year for this segment. You know, we watch a lot of games and listen to a lot. We do some yep. ourselves, and we kind of fall into the trap. You know, there gets to be common words that announcers use, and some of them just, just grate on us a little yep. bit. So we're going to take our turn and just let you know what we think are cliches in the sports world that either don't make any sense or we just wish they wouldn't say it. Mark, you start. All right, I'm going to go through my list first of all. My first one is dial up a blitz. A, nobody dials up anything anymore. It's a touch pad, whatever. <laughs> and if you're still dialing something up, that's from 20 years ago. Stop dialing up. It's too slow anyway. Find another term other than dial Good up point. a blitz. Okay. The other one, and I don't really have a, a, I just don't like that he brings this to the table or she brings this to the table. Unless when it's I, food for some. Exactly right. When it's food, <laughs> today is pie day, by the way. I'm going to go home and have some. And, and that's okay. You can bring that to the table. Don't bring your zone press to the table. Don't bring your jump shot to the table. Okay, that's it. 
And then, just because I'm one of those guys who used to score a lot in the low post, yeah. and I got fouled a lot, those were three-point plays. Make a field goal, make a free throw. Now those are known as old-fashioned three-point <laughs> plays. As an old guy, I find that disrespectful for us people of age. And if that's the case, then that shot from 19 feet nine, that should be the newfangled three-point oh, play. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a good point. I think that's only fair. All right. And then, just because of, uh, you know, you get involved with officiating and so on, it's not a jump ball anymore. There are only times we have a jump ball to start a game or to start each overtime session. It's a held ball. It's not a jump ball anymore. Let's drop the old vernacular and let's go to held ball. And then finally, here we go. <laughs> Official time. Hey, he reached in. That's a foul. You know what? You're allowed to reach in. You can't hit him on the arm. You can't whack him. But reaching in is completely legal. Take the ball away if you want. Just don't make contact. And the other one that gets on my nerves and grates on me, he's over the back. Yes, he is. And that's completely legal. He can't go through his back. He can't make contact with his back. He can't be on his back. But he can go over the back all he wants as long as he doesn't make contact. I like those. There you go. That's my complaint. I got a few. I know you. You know, announcers, they're always coming up with, trying to come up with new ways to say old things. For instance, out in space. That means in the open field. If you're long, you used to be tall. Pick six, that's just an interception for a touchdown. And then they came up with trickeration. Let me read uh, what trickeration really is according to a very wise uh, sportscaster. A fictitious word commonly used by football announcers to make themselves feel intelligent. <laughs> the word they really mean to say is trickery. Now, physicality, I don't like that one, but you know what? That's a real word. I, I, I didn't know that was I a real word. I did a game word. with Andy last year. I said he used physicality. I said, I'm using a real word. He said it is. I know. And it is. I'm it's shocked a word. at that. I'm disappointed, but nonetheless. Yeah. And then words that seem to be the words of this past bowl season in football, I think the producers and directors got all the announcers into a trailer and said, you're going to use these words because everybody was saying high-pointed. He high-pointed the ball. We used to say that means he caught it at its highest point. And the other one they're saying is tempo. They're going tempo. Well, tempo is either slow or fast. fast right. Up tempo or dial it back. Dial it back. There you go. Glad <laughs> yeah. you used it. Uh, but it, tempo is really the rate of activity or a pace. It can be fast or slow. You don't just go tempo. Okay. So announcers kind of use words that coaches use anyway. Yeah. All right. This category is think about what you're saying. As he said or like he said, if he already said it, then don't say it again. Dribble drive. That's usually when they penetrate. Yeah. Well, if you, dri dribble, if you drive and don't dribble, it's, it's a violation, it's a, right? Travel. All right, yes, to travel. To be honest with you, does that mean everything else he said was lies? You know, when they say, to be honest with you, that concerns me a little yeah. bit. This, is, this falls under the category of lack of command of the English language. Tough road, R-O-A-D, to hoe. We don't hoe a road. We hoe a row in a garden, R-O-W. Yes. It's tough row to hoed. Next one, that point is mute. Mute means silent, not speaking. What Gary Danielson in that bowl game meant to say was, that point is moot, M-O-O-T. That means it's debatable or meaningless. Ohio State versus Michigan. Verse is a sequence of words as in poetry, music, or the Bible. Versus, that means in contest against. Two national sportscasters said that one. Trent Dilfer and Kirk Herbstreet. Injury to the shoulder, what is it? Is it a rotor cup injury? Is it a rotor cuff? Or maybe a rotary cup? No, <laughs> it is a rotator cuff yes. injury. I've heard people say, I had rotor cup surgery. Yeah. Well, that's pretty unique because you ain't got one in your body. And, you know, using in, uh, noun, verbs as nouns, like this book is a good read or that was a great take. Let verbs be verbs. Yep. Use nouns. All right, this falls under the category of most abused. The word, literally. That means it really happened. Word for word, I saw, I heard a radio talk show host say, the phone is literally ringing off the hook. I'd like to see I'd that. I'd like to see that. Yes, it would. And then Kirk Herbstreet again. I really like Kirk Herbstreet. But apparently you can make millions of dollars and not know the English language very well. Because Kirk said, they literally left their heart on the field, in which case we all ought to call 911. So that's just a few that bother us. We got it off our chest. We don't yeah, have we to did. deal with that anymore, except when we're driving in a car, yes. we always do. Now, we have one more rant, and that's you. Well, it's just, why do we use taxpayer dollars for high school sports? Okay, and this is a dead flat. We've got to get away from the humor a little bit. 
High school sports are an extracurricular activity. That's why we use tax dollars to support it. It's to know you can learn things on the playing field, at marching band, in drama, in choir, in the chess club that you can't learn in the classroom. Self-discipline, time management, how to win, how to lose, how to be a teammate, all kinds of skills that you learn. Yes, we want to win basketball games and football games and softball games and whatever, and that's important because learning how to win is a skill. Yeah. But so is learning how to lose, and I think we need to understand why we actually play these games and why we use tax taxpayer dollars to support them. It's not just for W's and L's. I agree. I, I tell people a lot of times, and I'm a, a very loyal Bowling Green graduate, I learn more outside the classroom than I did in. There you go. I think there's no question. All right, let's put up our broadcast schedule for this week. There you see it. Oh, my goodness, some great ones. The boys trying to get to Columbus. The girls are down there getting ready. want to let you know that these will be the last games that we do this year due to Spectrum, which used to be Time Warner, exercising their rights to be the sole broadcaster for all state semi and final games. WOSN will not be able to bring you any games from Columbus. We're sad about that, but that's part of the rules, and that's what we'll abide by. Hey, we have to say goodbye till August. From Mark and I, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you next time. You've been watching A Closer Look with Mark Shine and Mark Miller. Good night.